I saw a story today that U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, the terrific United States Senator from Florida, introduced something called the Obamacare Taxpayer Bailout Protection Act. I thought, wow, I got to get, I got to see if we can get a hold of Senator Rubio and have him join us to explain that on our guest line. Uh, the terrific, as I said, U.S. Senator from Florida, Senator Rubio, welcome back. How have you been? I've been well. Thanks for having me on. You going to run for president in 2016? <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> no, no conversation about that today, huh? Yeah, not yet. Not Boy, right. there really is. Uh, before we get into Obamacare and all the the craziness that's uh, surrounding the Affordable Care Act, <clears throat> we Republicans are having quite the conversation right now. It seems not only about the midterm election and how important it is, but about 2016. Um, there, there's a guy you know you know well named Jeb Bush, yeah. who's being mentioned as uh, sort of the preferred candidate among. Uh, the 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 sort of Republican insiders, boy, I, Jonah Goldberg wrote a piece saying, "Oh no, and not another Bush that that could very well spark a third party challenge." Uh, any thoughts at all about about the, the the GOP nominee who will likely have to try to tackle Hillary Clinton in 2016, Senator? Well, you know, I think and you mentioned Governor Bush is one. I think we've got a number of very quality and qualified people who uh, in our party who could lead the country, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I think the the, the bigger point is. You know, after six years of this administration, this country is in desperate need of, of unity of purpose and unity of principles. And I, and I think the Republican Party, not just from its presidential nominees, but even in 2014 through its Senate and House candidates and governor's candidates, can begin to unify our country beyond, behind principles that I think Americans all share and we've somehow forgotten, the, pre, the you know, principles like freedom and family and the importance of faith and uh, work and opportunity yep. and peace through strength. I mean, these are the these are the element that, of our greatness. I mean, this is at the core of what made America special. And I think our country is in desperate need of a political movement, which I hope will be the Republican Party, that won't just unify people and remind us of these principles, but uh, from it uh, outline an agenda for action that would restore the promise of the American dream and and America's rightful place in the world. Well, one of those one of those political policies or one of those political strategies, I think that will be a winner is for Republicans to challenge Obamacare. According to CNBC, three out of four people, every three out of every four people signing up for Obamacare need subsidies. Yeah. Lindsey Graham uh, said, your, your colleague in the Senate said, when the employer mandate hits, companies all over America are going to drop coverage. It'll be cheaper to pay the fine than it will be to cover the employees. This is a monstrosity, he said. Uh, I think you'd agree. Tell us a little bit about what you've introduced in terms of this um, this legislation to try to hold the Obama administration accountable. Well, first, let's remind ourselves of why it is we're opposed to Obamacare. I mean, let's the, most people don't live their lives waking up in the morning and checking off an ideological scorecard. This right. is not simply about ideology. Okay, This is about common sense, about what history teaches us works and what does not work. So we do have a problem in this country. We have 38 million people or so that are uninsured, and common sense tells you you have to fix that. But common sense also tells you that Obamacare is not the way to fix it, and here the numbers tell you why. So you have 38 million people that are uninsured. By their own accounts, let's say 7 million people did sign up for Obamacare here at the end. We don't know the number, okay? How many of those, just a small percentage of those people who are signing up were ever uninsured? By some estimates, as low as 15% of the people who signed up were uninsured. So what you've basically done is you forced people who were already insured to switch from one insurance to another insurance, but you didn't really make a dent on the uninsured problem. Maybe another 3 million signed up for Medicaid. Again, you didn't really make a dent on on, on, on the uninsured. So you, you, you got maybe a handful of three, four, five million people who are uninsured, who are now insured, and that's giving them the benefit of the doubt. But you've, dis you've done nothing for the rest, and you've disrupted the entire health care marketplace. So basically, you have thrown everyone into chaos. And what you got in return is you've insured just a handful of people more than used to be insured. So common sense says there's got to be a better way. And, and that's what I think Republicans need to offer, a better way. And I think those ideas are out there to allow individual Americans, especially those who do not have health insurance coverage, to have the ability to access and buy affordable health insurance that they decide they need from any company in the country that will sell it to them. Now, my idea is based on another part of Obamacare. As part of Obamacare, there's something that's called the risk corridor. What that basically means is that these companies that jump into these exchanges, if they lose money, there's going to be money there in government to bail them out, to prevent them from suffering catastrophic losses. The Obama administration, after I began to criticize that and filed a bill to prevent it, 
the Obama administration says, well, don't worry, that money will not come from general revenue. We will only use the money that's surplus from the other companies that are making money in order to pay for this offset. And so what I'm doing with this bill now is I'm saying, fine, if that's what you intend to do, then let's put it in writing. Let's pass a law that says that there can be no bailout money for companies that doesn't come from the companies themselves. It cannot come from the taxpayer. It cannot come from general revenue. It's a pretty straightforward thing. All I'm doing is taking the president's own words and codifying it into law. Yeah, but, but and I can't imagine they'd be against that. Yeah. But I anticipate they will. Well, of course they will, Senator. I mean, uh, frankly, we, we, ha- we haven't seen anything that means – that, that, that means what they say when it comes to deadlines, when it comes to exemptions. I mean, they've really changed. They've moved the goalposts down the field on, on Obamacare from, from day one, haven't they? They have because the plan doesn't work, and now they're scrambling to plug the holes for political purposes. So virtually every major aspect of the law has been delayed after the 2014 elections. Um, Uh, because they know the impact it's going to have. And this is never going to work because, again, this entire law, Obamacare, is completely built on wishful thinking, not on truth, not on common sense, not on what history teaches us works and what doesn't, and that you're seeing the catastrophic results of it. What, do, do you agree, Senator, that this that, that politically speaking, and I know you're right, nobody, no, Americans don't have political scorecards, but, but Republicans have to win in November. We, we want to take the Senate. We want to retain the House. Let me ask you a question. Is it a politically winning strategy to go after Democrats on the subject of Obamacare with, yes. with an intensity? Yeah, it is, because I'll tell you that uh, they're responsible for what they did. I mean, people need to be held accountable. They put a law on the books that have disrupted the health care coverage of millions and millions of people who were very happy with the insurance they had and now have lost it or been disrupted. And it's disrupted the entire health care marketplace in exchange for results that aren't nearly enough and certainly not even close to what they have promised. So they need to be held accountable to that. So, yes, I think not only is it a viable political option, it's a right political option, and it's one they need to be held to account for in 2014. But I go on to argue that if our hope is not just to win the next election, but to win the future and to be a movement that Repu- that the American people can rally behind and unify behind, we can't just say we're against Obamacare. I think we also need to begin to offer and continue to offer, as we have been, alternatives to what we can do to truly help those who do not have health insurance coverage. And to that end, Charles Krauthammer last Last night on Fox News uh, addressed this. He talked about an alternative GOP health care plan. I want to share with you his his comment and see what you think. Uh, assuming, again, Republicans win control of the Senate, they should be picking through the wreckage of what's left of Obamacare. For example, you cover people with pre-existing conditions, uh, uh, young people up to 26. You are not going to cancel the insurance of the, let's assume, a million, a million and a half newly insured who have signed up. And you work around that, and you do good reforms, which would be Republican and conservative reforms, and you present that. If Obama wants a veto, well, then I think he'll carry his party into 2016 in really terrible shape. Is he right? I think he, he largely is. There's no doubt about it. I think that what we need to do is off oh, head of people, look, we recognize that there's a problem with people who are uninsured in America. The solution to that not problem is not to disrupt people that are already insured. The solution to that problem is to allow people to have access to health insurance that they can afford and that they want at, 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 and to be able to buy it from any company in America that's willing to sell it to you. And that's the cornerstone of it. Beyond that, there are things we can do. I mean, there's the you know high-risk pools at the state level. There's a valid option for people who are chronically ill and impossible to insure. I think there's elements of transparency that need to be important in terms of knowing how medical – uh, and medicine is, is priced. And I, I think tort reform is a big part of this as well, because defensive medicine is truly driving up the cost of and overutilization of health care in America. I like our chances, Senator, as we get closer and closer, as we inch towards the midterm elections. But I also think we better be careful about being overconfident, being lax, being sort of uh, set right now. We, we got to keep fighting, don't we? We do, and I think the best way to do that is to begin to think not just simply about how we're going to win, but what we're going to do after we win. I mean, we still have a country we have to run. We still have to turn this ship around in terms of the direction it's going to now. There is still a tremendous amount of financial insecurity out there among millions of Americans that needs to be addressed. And I think our job is to convince people that our ideas work better than theirs. We have history and evidence on our side. Senator Marco Rubio, I know how busy you are. We always appreciate your time. Keep fighting the good fight, sir, and thanks for this piece of legislation. Very important stuff.